Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? I hope everybody is doing good. I am coming to you from my mom's house in Miami. She is with my sister and my, you know, um, visiting my dad. He is in physical therapy. So just to give you guys a little update of what is going on, my dad really seems to be improving. So we are pretty, pretty happy. He's not eating as much as we would like him to eat. But he is giving it a shot and he's trying. Um, he has been in physical therapy for the last week. He's been doing really well. He's walking, um, not as fast as he used to, but he is getting there. And um, we've been pretty happy about it. So we are hoping to have him home in about a week. So I just wanted to say thank you for all you guys that have reached out and have really um, you know, reached out to me and my sister, Nancy about our situation and stuff and we are so grateful that everybody was you know was thinking about us and praying for us and yeah we're pretty pretty happy about it i will be heading back to virginia starting tomorrow um you know carlito i flew carlito in my son and we're gonna both be driving back um i'll probably be in virginia for maybe a week week and a half but then i do want to come back to florida just to make sure that I can provide some additional help if I can, and then go back to Virginia, okay? So hopefully life will get back to normal. So I know that the lighting is a little bad here, and I hope that, you know, um, you guys can see me and hear me okay, but I decided let's, um, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and do my life because religiously I have been doing them every Friday at 8 o'clock, and I really love doing these shows because I get to help you guys and educate you guys. And also, you know, we get to share ideas and all that kind of stuff. And it's really my time. I really love spending Friday evenings with you guys. So what are we gonna be talking about this Friday? All right, so this Friday, what I thought about us talking about is how are we going to provide great customer service to um, our customers in the embroidery business? You know, the embroidery business can be kind of tricky, right? Because if you really think about it, embroidery is all about customization. If you, you know, if you really, really think about it really in detail, right? If you take a moment and you start thinking about all the customers that you've had, okay, you can honestly say that no two customers are actually the same because the work that we do is really very unique and is very much custom. And because it's custom, there is a lot of things that can go wrong. And we really need to make sure that when we take these orders, that we take them correctly. And that when these customers come and pick up their orders, they are so happy with your order that you got a customer for life. And hopefully that customer will be bragging about you and the things you do. And you could end up having more customers come to your business. So one of the things about the embroidery world, and I'm trying to um, hook up my computer because I don't want you guys to lose, um, I don't want my laptop to lose power. So one of the things about the embroidery world is that reputation is very, very important, okay? Because anyone can buy an embroidery machine. Anybody can embroider, you know, if they take the time to learn it. But if you are really, really, really good at it, that reputation of you being really good at what you do is really what is going to take your business to the far top, okay? Because people are always looking for other folks that can do embroidery on polos, on jackets, on scarves, hats, especially small business owners, when they are looking for people to do embroidery for them, they really want someone that can really take on a job, you know, do great custom work and can really provide really good customer service. So I wanted to talk to you guys and I had jot down a couple of things that we really need to think about when we are working with our customers and making sure that we can provide not only a great customer service for the actual customer that we're embroidering for, but think about the experience for you as an embroiderer as well, okay? 
because at the end of the day, if you're doing embroidery, it's really because you love doing what you do. Like I know for me, like right now, I'm a little bit under the weather for the simple fact that, you know, we not only do I have a lot going on in my personal life with my dad being ill and all, but I'm away from my sewing machine, so my my uh, sewing room. And in my sewing room, I have all my embroidery machines. And my embroidery machines are really like a safe haven for me because I really feel like they take me to a whole other world. And it's something that I truly, truly love doing it. So when you love doing what you do, which is for me embroidery, it's all about quality, right? And I want that experience whenever I'm embroidering to really like be a happy experience for me. So to me, it's like I kind of look at this as, you know, what is not only a great experience for the customer, but for you as a embroidery machinist as well. OK, and also digitizers, too. Now, um, you know, so let's talk about some of the things that, you know, can really um, we need to really think about because, like I said, you want this to be a positive experience for all, all parties involved, all right? So I did write down a couple of things. I'm going to go through my little notes in here that I kind of put on my phone right now. Okay, so first thing that I put down is not setting the proper expectations, okay? Now, a lot of times I feel that this usually happens because people don't take the time to communicate with one another. You know, you don't want to rush this process at all. When customers come to you and they ask for embroidery, I really think, especially when I do this locally, all right, I really think it's best thing to do is to really, when you meet with the customer for face to face, is make sure that you get all of the requirements and you also set the expectations and not just your expectation as an embroiderer, but listen to their expectations as a customer as well. You know, it's something that you both have to talk and communicate and really make sure that we you have an understanding on both sides of the coin, okay? For instance, I'll give you an example. With me, my expectation is that I want to make sure I get my money up front, okay? I don't turn on the machine without full payment. That's just something that I just do. Okay. Um, like for example, you know, I look at it as whenever you order something online, whether it be on my Etsy shop or whether you even order something from a store like Macy's or an, another online shop, whenever you order, you always pay up front. So I don't take partial payments or anything like that. It's full payment. If you can't provide full payment, then I just, I won't take the order. It's just that simple. Or if you drop off the item and you don't send the payment, then I make sure that, you know, I wait till I get the payment and then I'll start the embroidery. And I always will call the, the customer and say, hey, you know, I, I got the items. I'm ready to go. However, I have not received your payment yet. And that's why the items are not processed yet. So always um, put a little notation on the invoice when you send that to the customer. You know, make sure that, you know, you let them know up front that at you know once you've accepted the order and once you provide them the info the, the invoice make sure that the invoice actually specifies those terms as to that full you know the items are processed once full payment is received okay i mean some people like to do i'll take half and then i'll take the other half later i personally don't like doing that because i don't want any type of uh, I don't I don't feel safe for the fact that sometimes for some people that I know, I, I'm, I'll be fine with it, even though, to be honest, the people that I really know kind of know my expectations anyway. So they always provide me full payment on up front. They I never got any um, any problems with the folks that I regularly um, work with. I just feel that you're kind of taking a risk. And I know that some people um, have, you know, that I've talked to in the past have had issues with just getting half payment and stuff like that. So I just like things to be nice, clean, and cut. So what I usually do is I will um, do an invoice. And um, on the invoice, what I will always do is write down in detail what the expectations from the customer is. For instance, if they have a certain logo that they want me to put on their polo shirt or on their jacket or something like that, um, I'll put down, you know, um, embroidering uh, jackets, uh, left 
left side logo, the back, whatever it is that they want. Um, I I always make sure I, I jot down the, the threads that are going to be used, you know, the colors, uh, any type of customization. I write it all down. I make sure that the customer reads the invoice so that I have a clear understanding of what they want. I also do print out a template of their um, embroidery design to make sure that they know what the what it's going to look like, the actual size. I also um, work with them and, and show them where it's actually going to be placed on the item. That way there's no surprises because the last thing you want to do is accidentally embroider something on the wrong side of the shirt or accidentally like they think that it should have been bigger or smaller. You know, they just had a different perception because they might have a different vision from you. And that I kind of like to close as many of those gaps as possible. That way they know exactly what is going to happen, exactly how it's going to look, exactly what threads are going to be used. I have absolutely no problem showing the customers the actual thread spool. So that way they can see what the red's going to look like, what the blue's going to look like, or the white, or whatever other color they pick, okay? That is like so, so super important. That really prevents a lot of problems, okay? And that's the thing. When you have an issue like that, you know, where you didn't gather the requirements correctly, or they just had some type of misunderstanding, the last thing you want is for you to go ahead and embroider it, and then they get it, and they're not happy. And you got to remember, too, that, you know, when they get their end product, they are going to really, you know, that's, that's the, um, how am I going to say this? It's kind of like the perception that they're going to get from you and your business, okay? What they're going to come out and say, okay, well, she didn't listen, she didn't understand. And then, you know, your reputation can really go downhill because then what can happen is people will say, oh, you know, uh, I got this embroidered and she she just didn't, she just didn't get it. She just didn't listen or it's not, this isn't the way I wanted it to be. You want the customer to walk out saying, oh my God, that's amazing. Or that, oh my God, it looks better than what I even like, thought it was going to look like. Those are the types of comments you want your customers to tell you, okay? Um, so make sure that you are setting the expectation. And there are going to be times where customers may come to you with a logo or something that when you try to get it in um, digitized or you even come out and stitch it out, it just flat out doesn't look good. It does something doesn't look good. I let the customer know up front. Please be honest with them. Okay. Don't go ahead and just do something in the, you know, and, and just just because they said if you don't think it's gonna look good or the customer's not gonna be happy about it, make sure that you have that discussion with them because you want to make sure that it is exactly how they want it to be. I did have one customer where she gave me some jackets. She picked a color. It did look like it might stand out, but the font that she picked was not a thick font. It was pretty thin. So when I went ahead and I embroidered it, it really didn't show. And I know that customer wasn't happy with it, but the thing is, I couldn't do anything about it. Once it was embroidered, it was kind of embroidered. It felt really bad, but I mean, she did pick the color. So, you know, so it was just like, oh boy. So that was like one time where I was kind of like, oh God, moving forward, um, I was really going to, uh, you know, I, I kept thinking to myself, how could I have made that better? Um, and I think what I should have did was maybe just, just had said no to that font with that color thread, knowing that it wouldn't have stood out. Uh, you know, so I was just kind of like that, that kind of sucks, you know, but hey, you know, things are going to happen, you know, when you're running a business and you're dealing with a lot of customers, and you're taking a lot of orders. Some you're bound in light in your life while you're while you're doing this to have somebody that, you know, and it's not that she did anything bad or I did anything bad. It just did it, the expectation was different, you know, it's like she thought it was really going to stand out and it really didn't, you know, so it was just like, eh, you know, so, you know, to, 
to move forward, I was just thinking to myself, when it comes to certain things, you're just going to have to like really speak up. I just kind of like took the order and I really should have known that that was not going to look right, but I just didn't, I, I just figured, oh, I'll chance it. Cause there have been times too, don't get me wrong, where customers had asked for something and I was like, I don't think that's going to look right. And then when I was done embroidering it, it was amazing. Because I just thought colors were off or something like that. But then when they went ahead and they did the embroidery, it was just, it was amazing. It was beautiful. So I was just like, oh, so, you know, it's all about vision, right? So, okay. So that was one thing that I wanted to mention. Just not setting the um, the expectations up front and having that great communication with the customer. That really makes a difference. The other thing also is under quoting the job okay so under quoting the job is i'm talking to you guys about the pricing okay uh oh, i have even said to you guys in the past when you do embroidery where people usually find out that you do embroidery i get a lot a lot of people that come to me and they just come out and say oh i want to get this embroidered how much would it be right up the front they want a solid straight answer from you with a price quote and one of the things I always tell you guys to do, and which I still do, and I do this all the time, is never give a price up front too quickly. You have to do your research, okay? When you do that, what ends up happening is you may end up giving them um, a price and you just lowballed yourself, okay? You just screwed yourself because now what's happening is the customer is, go ha is, is happy because they're saying, wow, I'm getting this embroidered for this price. And then when you go to actually do the work, you start thinking about, wow, this logo had a lot of details. It took a long time to embroider. This logo um, was more costly for me to get digitized than I originally thought. Use a lot more thread. I had to use a specialty needle. I had to slow down the machine. Instead of using one sheet of, of cutaway stabilizer, I had to use two and I had to use topping. You know, all those things probably didn't even go through your mind. Right when you first looked at it and said, oh, okay, it would cost this much. Then they went off happy and now you're upset because you know you undercut yourself. And it's not like you're going to go back to the customer and say, hey, I know I quoted you $20, but I really should have quoted you $35. So the price is going to be $35. Okay, that could be kind of like an uncomfortable situation, right? So usually what you try to do is like, you know, I was saying before, you know how you're asking for expectations, you're gathering the requirements and everything. You have to make sure that you have all the details necessary in order for you to make sure that you are quoting that job correctly, okay? So you got to ask them, are you going to provide the 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 item that I'm going to embroider on, or am I going to provide it, right? For example, if you want a hat, are you going to give me the hat or do I have to buy the hat? Same thing with the shirt. You're going to give it to me or I have to buy it, okay? Because the thing is, right off the bat, if you're providing the product, that means you have to incorporate the cost of that product into your quote, okay? But if they're providing this product, then you have a whole different thing, okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to come out and say, okay, um, you're going to provide me the product and I will take that because right now you're taking a risk, right? You're going to go ahead and you're going to embroider on the product that the customer gave you. But what happens if you mess up on that item, right? So, well, usually what I do in those situations is I'll assume the risk, okay? And what I'll do is I'll ask the customer, where did you buy this? Because if it gets messed up, then I, I will replace it. And I don't have a problem replacing it or even, you know, refunding you the money for the item if it can't be replaced. But you got to let me know up front how much that's going to cost. Because let's say you the, the customer comes to me with a polo shirt, right? And it's a really expensive shirt, like an $85 shirt or $100 shirt, right? That I want to know on my side, am I going to take a risk on a $100 shirt? Okay. Meanwhile, all I'm doing is putting initials on a hundred dollar shirt, which is only $20. So the thing is, you know, you got to make sure that when you are gathering these requirements, you know, the risks that you're accepting. And also you want to make sure that you understand everything that's going on 
with the job in order for you to price it correctly. If you're going to, you know, so you can price all your materials, you can price your time and any type of digitizing or anything like that. So be very careful with that, okay? So I always tell people, do not, and I'm telling you right now, and I'm gonna be right up and straight up honest with you, people will push you for a price right then and there. They're, they don't sometimes like hearing that, saying that, well, in order for you to give me, give you a quote of how much something would cost, a lot of factors have to be taken in place. So we, me and you need to have a, a sit down or a conversation. And then sometimes they'll tell you some of the details, but there's some details that you don't know up front. For example, let's say they have a logo, they need to get it digitized, right? Okay, well, usually what I'll do is I'll go to my digitizer and I'll come out and say, hey, can you tell me how much it's gonna cost for you to go ahead and, and um, digitize this logo? So that's one cost right there. And at the same time, I'll let them know, can you give me an estimation of how many stitches are involved in um, in this, you know, in creating this embroidery file? Because right there, I will get a stitch count. And when I get a stitch count, that will give me an idea of how long that item is going to be um, stitching out on my machine. Because remember, time is money, okay? So, you know, your time is just as precious as the customers and everybody else's, okay? So you don't want to come out and just say, oh, you know, that's simple, um, it's $10 or it's $15. Never, 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 just don't do it. Don't give prices upfront, not like that, okay? Always make sure that you give yourself time to really think about how much you want to set a price. And this is the other thing too, okay? No two jobs are alike, okay? Embroidery is all about customization, doing custom work. That's really what it's all about, okay? So when you are doing um, custom work for one customer versus another customer, no two customers are the same, okay? No two customers are the same. The only time I would tell you that, yeah, it might be the same, is if somebody comes up and say, oh, I want to, um, you know, the initials, I don't know what you call that, Mo mono, monogram or mammogram. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. The initials, the three initials or the two initials. Um, I think it's my, I, my English is bad, but y'all, y'all know what I'm saying. Okay. In those situations, I would say, yeah, you could probably do like a ballpark price, but I still say be careful with that for the simple fact that not everybody wants initials on the same product, okay? Not everybody wants it on a hat. Not everybody wants it on a, a polo shirt. Sometimes you have to take in consideration where you're putting those initials, okay? And also take in consideration size, okay? Not all embroidery designs are three inches. Some are four inches, some are five. You know, sometimes people want their the back of their jackets embroidered or something like that. Size takes a big, big, um, you know, a, a big, you know, size is a big important part of, of your, your quoting process, okay? Because the bigger an embroidery design is, that means the more stitches you're gonna be using, the more stitches, the more thread, the more thread, the more time. Okay, so just make sure that, you know, you keep that in the back of your mind, okay? So that is something that you really want to make sure that you understand, okay? Don't um, give prices too quickly because it can really be a bad experience for the both of you. Because what ends up happening is, you know, you give them one quote, you 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 sell, sold yourself short, or you overquote, and then next thing you know, they feel like they got jets, okay? My motto is to be fair, okay? Of course, I, I don't want to rip off the customer. I don't want them to feel like I'm so expensive that I'm untouchable or something like that. And um, It's not that. You know, my thing is that I just want to be fair. I want to give the customer a good fair price, but at the same time, um, I don't want to feel like I got taken advantage of. So that's really, really, really important. Okay. So that's just something that, you know, you got to make sure that you pay attention to. The other thing that, let me see, that I also wanted to um, 
to talk to you guys about is something about selling on the cost versus um, selling the service, okay? So I'm going to say that again because this is probably the first time you guys heard me say that is selling, you know, is which which is, you know, selling is really pricing, pricing on the cost versus pricing the service. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what I mean by each of these. OK, let's talk about selling by the cost. When I'm talking about selling by the core, the cost, and we're talking pricing, okay? What happens is sometimes people come out and say, okay, I bought this shirt for $4. Um, and the stabilizer costs 10 cents. So that's $4 and 10 cents. Then um, I have some thread. So let's say, you know, the stitches is about 4,000 stitches. So I'll put like maybe a dollar fifty times four thousand, right? So that's what like a five, four, uh, five, six dollars, something like that. So you know, you start adding all that up. Then I say, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna do the job for twelve dollars or whatever, right? Well, you kind of didn't do yourself a service. You know why? And I'm going to tell you why. All you did was when you came out and said, okay, I'm going to sell this for $12. Think about all the prices that I just pulled out of my mouth, okay? I came out and I said the shirt cost you a certain amount. The thread's costing a certain amount. Um, you didn't even charge for the time. You didn't even charge for your time, okay? So all you're doing is you're spending money on materials and you're just pricing your items so that you get your money back for the materials. So to me, I'm like, okay, so you are selling on the cost. And this is another thing too that I, I want you guys to think about, all right? I find that a lot of people, especially that are going new into embroidery, when they create something and they price it, a lot of times what they do is they're looking at other people and how they're pricing their items. And then they try to undercut those other people. Like, for instance, let's say that I have um, a hat and I'm embroidering a hat with initials. And I see, I go on Etsy and I'm saying, oh, who else is embroidering hats with initials? And I see that they're selling the hats for 15 bucks. So I come and I say, oh, okay, well, if they're selling them for 15 bucks. I'm going to sell mine for 12. That way I can get the customers to buy my hats because I'm cheaper. Well, are you really making a good decision by doing that? You know, if you really think about it, I mean, yeah, you're cheaper, but are you really the best? You know what I mean? Is it really going to work for you? Now, let's just hold on to that thought, okay? So now let's talking about let's talk about selling the service. Now, what do I mean about um selling the service okay what i mean about selling the services i mean about selling quality work one thing for sure people will not have a problem paying the extra money for good quality work anybody can take an embroidery machine anybody can embroider initials but can they embroider in a good quality way? You know what I'm saying? You know, are they going to have like, you know, are they going to really be able to give a good crisp embroidery? So my thing is when you do good quality work, not only can you price your items to cover the cost of all your materials, your time, okay? But you can also ask for a little bit more, okay? Then if you were just doing, you know, plain cost for uh for materials, okay? Um don't know. Yeah, selling on the cost, the actual cost of the material. Now because your quality of your work is so good, not only are you including the cost of your material and stuff like that, you're actually um, incorporating the cost of your skill, your skill level. So, you know, just want to make sure you guys have that understanding. 
that, you know, skill, embroidery skill is important, okay? And people take notice of that. Customers take notice of that, all right? So it's very important for you to make sure that you have a good digitizer that works with you, all right? Someone that can digitize. Now, I know that if you go on Facebook and all that kind of stuff, and everything, you'll see a whole bunch of digitizers out there. But you have to be very careful, too, because sometimes you have people that had just started to learn how to digitize, and they're not very good quality digitizers, all right? You want a digitizer that can take an image and can really make it clean, can really, um, really knows how to um, create the correct pattern, all right, for that embroidery image that you, that you need. Um, the other thing is good digitizers know about different fabrics. They know about different uh, needles. They know about the, the um, thread weight. And they will ask you the questions as to, okay, you're going to have this design digitized. What are you going to use it for? So, you, you know, you, when you have a digitizer that, un, that knows really good digitizing and knows about the different fabrics and the weights and all that stuff and the needles and all that kind of stuff, they can really give you good solid files for you to go ahead and embroider. And that is like so super important because that right there is like 50% of the work. The other half is actually you as an embroidery machinist, making sure you have the right equipment, the right needles, the right thread, using the right thread weights and making sure that you know the machine well enough to properly operate it so that a good stitch quality embroidery file is going to stitch out on your garment, okay? The quality of embroidery is so, so important. And I'm gonna tell you something, when you work on your embroidery skills and your embroidery work really um, becomes really, really good, customers take notice of that. Customers will brag about you and you will get noticed. Um, you know, remember, your skill is really what's going to make the reputation of your embroidery business, all right? Anybody can take a file and put it in the machine and just have it stitched out. However, though, knowing how to handle that machine in such a way that that stitch out comes out crisp and clean, that is golden. Okay. That is really, really golden. That's why it's really important. And I tell people, think about the equipment that you're getting. Make sure that it is, you know, when people ask me about multi-needle machines, there are a lot of good machines out there. The thing is that you want to make sure that you get a machine that you're going to be comfortable with, that you can get the proper support. You're going to understand. Okay. And you're going to really know how to manipulate that machine in such a way that all your embroidery machine, all your embroidery comes out clean and crisp. Okay. That is just so, so important. The last thing you want, okay, because remember, I'm always thinking win win situation, not just for the customer, okay, but for you as well. All right. The win win situation is the more you embroider, the more your skill sets really starts to become really, really good. And at the same time, the happier your customers are going to be because when they get their products from you, they're really going to be happy with what they see. Okay. So that is like really, really important. Um, the other thing that I want wanted to talk to you guys also um, regarding making sure that you're providing good customer service, it kind of goes along with um, when I'm talking about your skill set. Okay. You got to make sure that you are reinvesting in your business. Um, I know a lot of us, especially me, we all started with a single needle machine. I started with the Brother SE 1900. I still use it too. It's still a great machine. But eventually, if you're really serious about embroidery and you really want to grow your business, you're eventually going to have to invest in more equipment. And embroidery is not cheap. Not, not, not cheap. Okay. The other thing is not just the equipment that you're going to have to invest in. You're going to have to invest in yourself. And you're also going to have to make sure that you are always out there learning new things. 
learning about puff embroidery, learning about, you know, how to, when to use basting stitches, learning about new techniques of embroidery, the different types of embroidery, different types of stabilizers, different ways to fancy up your embroidery, hoop things, line them up and everything. That is, it's a, it's a big learning process. Okay. And this is the thing, when you start to really invest in your business and you start investing in your knowledge, your customers know this, your customers will know that and they appreciate that. And they know that when they go to you, they're going to get really good top-notch quality work. Okay. So, um, the other thing too, is, um, one of the things you need to understand and a lot of people, um, kind of, I find sometimes people, they, they kind of, I don't know. I don't know. If, well, maybe it's just because of me. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you what this is. Okay. Not knowing when to outsource the work. Okay. Um, not everybody in life can do everything. Okay. Now, if you can, then that's great. That's great for you. However, I know my limitations and I also know what I like to do, what I don't like to do. One of the things that I don't like to do is digitizing. I don't really care for it. I really don't because I don't mind being in a computer all the time. I usually am. I'm on a computer because I'm working on QuickBooks or something like that, or I'm actually in, um, in Brilliance and I'm working on some designs. But the thing is, when I'm working on designs, I don't really digitize designs. I usually make modifications to them, small modifications. So do I know some digitizing? I know the very, very basics. I just know enough for me to do what I need to do. However, though, when it comes to actual digitizing, I actually have digitizers that I work with. I prefer they do it because I am more of a machinist. So what I like to do is I like to do the machine, the embroidery machine work um, and just some of the... Um, digitize it, not all of it. You have to know really where your best skill sets lie. And that is really um, going to make you, if you can really determine that it, while you have your own embroidery business for the simple reason that, you know, like I said, digitizing is a lot of work. It's, it is not as easy as a lot of people think it is. Um, for me, it wasn't. Some people learn it right off the bat. I didn't really care for it. It's just maybe, just, maybe I didn't, it, I found it hard because it really wasn't an interest for me. But, um, you know, if you have an, uh, a logo and you go and you digitize it and you didn't digitize it correctly, chances are when you go ahead to embroider it on the customer's products, it's not going to come out good. So you're going to want to make sure that when you are working with someone, you know, a digitizer that they have really good quality digitizing skills. And you want to make sure that you know your limitations as well. And if you're starting off in embroidery, also take it one day at a time. Don't try to learn like the whole thing at one time. I find that hap I see a lot of people do that. And then what ends up happening is they get like kind of overwhelmed and they don't like embroidery anymore. You know, I, I, to me, it's like, I like the machine, right? So what I would do is I, you know, personally, I would say, hey, learn everything you can about the machine, make sure that you can embroider very well. But then after that, if you have extra time, then start taking digitizing classes and stuff like that. Um, but the thing is, sometimes I get so many orders for embroidery that I really don't have time to do digitizing either. Because digitizing can be time consuming also. It's not exactly something that you can just like, you know, do all the time. I mean, maybe you can if it's a simple design, but to me, I just, I don't want to bother with it. So usually what I'll do is I'll just have them, um, you know, do the machine. You know, I, I do the machine and I'll just go to one of my digitizers and say, hey, I need this uh, digitized. And then once they digitize it, I test stitch it. We make any type of modifications we need to on the design. And then I just keep pushing and stuff. So you know, just know your limitations, you know, know what to outsource also. Um, like I also outsource um, some of my administrative work for uh, my embroidery business. I can't do everything. I'm only one person, right? So, um, you know, I have to take orders. I have to process the orders. 
I also have to keep the accounting from the business going too. So sometimes when I, you know, I have to rely on, um, you know, people that I hire to actually do QuickBooks for me and stuff to keep my records straight. So it's just something that, you know, I want you guys to like think about, you know, stuff that you have to think about and stuff like that. Now, let me see. Um, all right, let's see. We're talking about customer experience also, okay? Um, packaging. Let's talk a little bit about packaging and stuff. And this, and you know what? I guess to make this a little easier too, because I am jumping around all over the place. Um, let's talk about an example of when somebody comes to see me, how I actually handle the order, okay? Usually what happens is I'll get a, um, a request from a customer that's local from me and they'll reach out to me through either Facebook or they'll reach out to me through Etsy or something like that. And usually they'll, they'll tell me right off the bat, I'm looking for some type of embroidery work. So what I usually do is at first I tell them, oh, well, thanks for reaching out. And I tell them, yes, I do do embroidery work and I could probably help you out. But I said, but in, in order to make sure that I can handle your order for you, I'm going to need some more details. And then I'll start having a conversation with them and I'll start, you know, asking them, can you send me a picture of what you're trying to embroider? Can you also send me a picture or more information regarding the products that you want embroidered on? And you start the conversation that way, right? And before you know it, they'll send me a picture of the logo or whatever it is that they need embroidered. I will take that information and I start working with my digitizers to get more information from him or her, whoever, um, whatever digitizer I'm working with at the time. And I will come out now and I'll ask them the basic questions. I usually tell them, I just need to know the price, the price that you would, you, you, you would quote me on getting this image digitized. And then right there, I already know how much that's going to cost me. And then I also tell them, can you please give me an estimation, a high estimation? And I usually say high is because I want them What's the worst scenario, right, of, of amount of stitches that this logo may have, okay? And I'll come out and say, you know, because I always ask the customer, how big do you want it? And then I'll tell them um, the digitizer it has to be three and a half inches or four inches or whatever it is, right? And then they'll get, I'll get right there, I get um, from the digitizer, I already get a price on how much it's going to cost to convert to an embroidery file. And I also get a um, cost, a, um, an amount of the stitches that it's going to take. And by looking at the image, you can already tell yourself how many color changes you're going to have, right? So you, that's, you know, that's, that's a given. So then what ends up happening is after I get that information, I just kind of write that down on the side. And then I have more conversations with the customer and I kind of ask them about where did they get their products from? And I explained to them that I have no problem um, stitching on their products. However, though, I need to know more about what kind of fabric, right? Because they could come to you with a shirt that is so paper thin, and then you have a design that is very, very dense. There's no way that that's going to work out. So um, usually when they tell me uh, the type of fabric that it is and they tell me where they purchase the item and stuff like that, I can get a rough idea of how much that item is going to cost to replace. Or sometimes I'll just come out and ask them, right? And then what happens is I'll also ask them the quality. How many of these items do you want me to embroider? And then I also come on and say, okay, when do you need it by? Okay, because that will also tell me if this person wants this stuff embroidered by like yesterday, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you'll know if this is either going to be a rush order or if you have plenty of time to work it, stuff like that, okay? Once I get all of that information, then I can sit down and I can come up with a quote. And after I come up with the quote, then I come out and I say, okay, for what you are talking about, which of course it never happens the same day because I always ask them to give me all that information. Once they give me that information, that's when I come out and I give them the quote. You know, I, I'll wait a day and I, you know, and I'll, I'll give them a quote and stuff. So then once I give them the quote, I, I ask them, would you like to let me know if you want to proceed? If they tell me that they do want to proceed, then I say, okay, great. I said that this is what we're going to do. And then I tell them, I say, I'm going to send you an invoice. And then the invoice is going to list in detail what it is that you're asking me to do. 
And I also tell them that when they come to drop off the products, what I will do is I will have a template printed out so they can see the actual size of the embroidery design, okay? And they can tell me exactly where it is that they want the, the embroidery design to go, especially like if it's a baby blanket. They don't need to tell me where it's going to go if they need a left or right chest uh, logo because I have a hooping stand and I can already know where, where I'm actually going to embroider that on there. So... In the invoice, you know, I do say, I email them the invoice and I list all everything that's going to happen, you know, like, okay, you want five shirts. Um, th this is what's going to be embroidered. This is the size of the logo. And these are the colors. Then um, when the customer, you know, and I always put that little indication in there and saying only, you know, items will be processed only when full payment is received. And I also make sure that I let them know the customer that full payment is expected up front. So what ends up happening is they come and a lot of times people will just pay the invoice right then, rent in, right, rent right there, right? And they'll Vino me the money or whatever, right? So I got the money and I'll tell them, oh, come on over. So they come over with the item and I have the template printed out and we can relook at the threads. We can make those small modifications if they want. A lot of times the modifications are so small and significant, it's not worth to requote or anything like that. However, though, if they come out and they say, oh, I need it twice as big, then I come out and I'll let them know and say, okay, well, I need to send you a, a, good, a new estimate because of the size that it requires more stitching right? More stitching requires more time. So I'm going to have to um, redo the quote. Um, and a lot of times this usually the process is very, very, very smooth. Okay. And it's smooth for the customer and it's smooth for me. And I always make sure that when I'm talking to them, it's really like a conversation. We're actually sharing information, right? I'm actually talking to them and I'm also describing to them the process of what I need to do in order to get their item embroidered. Because I want the customer to understand that this is not something that I just stick in the machine, press a button, and go to sleep. And all of the sudden, and all of his stuff is embroidered. It takes work, and they need to understand that. So you know, because I want them to understand what they're paying for. All right. Um, and then also, if a customer comes out and says, "Oh, that's too expensive," then I, you know, there have been times when I come out and say, "Well, how much were you thinking of spending for embroidery?" And if they come on, they give me, um, well, this is what I want. The only thing I can do. Or, oh, I, I would not be able to touch that. Uh, you know, and usually if, if I, if you know, I can make an item smaller, right? I can make the logo smaller. Or I can say, well, for that price, I, I can't put the logo, but I can just do the name. You know what I mean? So I'll work with them, you know? Um, but the thing is also one of the things that I advise you as an as an embroiderer to do is I know you some people want to make their customers happy, but be very careful with that because the last thing you want to do is you make the customer so happy that you just made yourself unhappy because now you got taken advantage of. And the other thing also that you have to be careful about is when you are negotiating, okay? Because that's what I, I say, I'm, I'm negotiating. But the thing is, I'm not really negotiating because what's happening is if my price goes down, the embroidery design goes down too. Either you're going to lose your logo, you're going to use the name, you're going to lose the name. Something's going to happen, okay? Because the bottom line is this for me, okay? This is how I look at it. When I've already gathered your requirements for exactly what you wanted, I already know what the fair price is. Now, if you're asked, telling me that you want to deviate from that fair price, and what I mean fair price is, that means it's a, it's a price that is not only just fair to me, but I'm trying to be as fair to the customer as well, because it's not that I'm trying to take all your money, okay? I also want to make sure that I'm making money too, because we're not doing this for free, okay? I, I would be doing it for free if it was a gift for someone or if I was doing something to embroider for my mom or my sister or family member, you know, that's free stuff. But when you're doing an embroidery business, no, there's, there is no free. So 
the way I look at it is if I have to cut down the price because you're saying that's too much, then there's something that's going to be cut down on that embroidery uh, project. You're going to be giving up something too because that to me is fair. So, and someone just came in. Hello. <laughs> How's that? He's good. He's good sleeping now. All right. So, I got to run out because I got ice cream in the car. Oh, my God. Okay. It's going to melt. All right. Bye. I'll catch the replay. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> okay. Have fun with your ice cream. Okay. So, getting back to this. And so, oh, she came back early. Okay. So, um, you know, just be careful of that because the last thing you want to do is to jip yourself. You really don't want to jip yourself. Okay. So just be really careful of that and stuff. Now, let me see. What else did I want to mention to you guys? <sighs> Nancy just threw me off. Okay. Um, the other thing. Okay. Processing your orders. Okay. And so. Um, you want to make sure that, um, okay, oh, no, no, no. Okay, when you're processing your orders, you know, okay, there's going to be times that you're going to have a little bit of orders and you have nothing but time. But then you're going to have other moments, like especially during the holidays, when you have so many orders that it's like, oh, boy, okay? Now, whatever time you have, whether it's a busy time or a short time, and you're talking to your customers about the order. Now, remember what I told you is that you always ask, when do you need the item by? The reason why I say that's important is you want to make sure that you are giving yourself enough time to fill this order. For I'll give you an example. Um, I have an order that's coming up for 120 dinner napkins for a wedding. Okay, because I actually embroider a lot of dinner napkins for weddings. And, you know, for those, those of you guys that have been at weddings, you can have small weddings and you can have big weddings. Okay, so <laughs> sometimes it can be a lot. It can be as little as 30 napkins. And then sometimes you can have over 100 or 200 napkins. Those all take time to embroider. So you got to make sure that when you are taking these orders, right, and you ask that question to your customer and say, hey, um, when do you need this by? Make sure that you are looking at your schedule and you can afford that time. Last thing you want is for time to be going by. And then all of a sudden, you are in a time crunch because what happens is you're going to get tired and you're going to start making mistakes and it's going to suck because then you're going to be like, I hate this. You know what I mean? So you got to make sure that you spread out your orders. Okay. Um, if a customer comes and says, Hey, I have a rush order. Um, make sure that you can put that time in there. You know um, I've heard, some people, they come out and they say they charge a rush order fee. Um, I've never done that. I personally have never done that, okay? Um, it, there's, a, there's a good and a bad, okay? Um, you could if, if, if you want to, okay? Because, hey, I mean, it is your time, right? And you are, you it's a rush order, so... You, you know, I totally understand the concept of if you want to be, if you want to cut the line, okay, and have your order processed before everybody else's, then you should pay a rush order fee, okay? Um, and some people do that. Some people come on and say, hey, you know, if you need this to be a rush order, you got to pay a little extra. So, you know, and it's basically what you're doing is you're paying to get in front of all the orders. That's really what you're doing. Me, though, on the other hand, I've never really um, charged a rush order fee. Um, what I do is I, I kind of really just tell the customer up front about what my schedule looks like. And I say, look, you know, I already have all these orders and they have to be out by a certain amount of time. If I take this order, I just want you to know it won't be ready till 
this date. Are you okay with that? And a lot of times you'll find that customers usually are, are fine with that, especially when they know that you are good at what you do, okay? They're going to be fine with it. Um, so, you know, it depends on how you want to handle it. I personally don't like the rush order fee because when I price my embroidery items, I always like to, um, I like my prices to be fair. And I just feel like if my prices are fair and then I start adding more, you know, to the price, I'm just making the price a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want the customer to feel like, oh, damn, she's an arm and a leg. You know what I mean? You know, um, so I, I prefer to work with them. If, if it's unrealistic and I really have, I'm full, I'll just tell the customer right up front and say, look, I'm really sorry. I just can't take your order, you know, because I have to do the other orders. The same thing too is I just don't like pushing people's orders aside just for someone that gave me extra money to go in front of a line. Because I value all my customers. So I like to do first come, first serve. That's how I like to work. You know, because when you talk to um, to your customers, I usually like to let them know when I can have the item done by. And usually I'll put an extra 24 hours in there just to have a little extra slack. But what ends up happening is a lot of times I end up finishing the order way before, but I like doing that because it kind of like, you know, it puts me ahead of the game and at the same time, you know, it makes the customer happy to know, wow, you know, she did that pretty fast and they could come and pick it up at their leisure. I don't have to worry about it because I know I got my payment up front, you know, and they could just pick it up, you know? So rush order fees, um, you know, I know some people do it, I'm not saying that they're bad either way. I mean, I say you got to do what works for you. Um, sometimes when, you, when you're working on a business, it's all trial and error. So you just got to be careful with that. You know, you just got to just, you know, don't just because somebody, um, you know, just because somebody, um, I think I lost you guys. There you go. Sorry about that. I had some, a call that uh, came in. You know, just because somebody that has an embroidery business has, you know, prices certain things a certain way. And that's another thing too, guys, be very, very careful with that. Like, you know, sometimes people, um, you know, how can I say it? I'm not, it's not copying what I'm saying. It's just because someone, and I've always, I even say that to my son all the time, just because someone makes a decision or does something one way doesn't mean that it's the right way or even that it's the right way for you, okay? For instance, and that's the reason why I don't like telling people what embroidery machines to buy. What You have to buy what you're comfortable in. And the same thing with how you're going to price and how you're actually going to handle your embroidery business and stuff like that. What I'm doing is just giving little pieces of advice just so you guys can just think about it, Okay. Um, you know, like some of you guys may come on and say, you know, I want to do a rush order fee. And that's okay. If that works for you, that's okay. Some of you guys will say, well, I, I want to price my items in a different way. And that's okay too. I'm just giving you guys things to consider. That's all it is. It's just things to consider. There is no right or wrong. Um, and this is the other thing too that you, I want people to remember. We all live in different parts of the world, okay? So the prices in one state or one country can be different from the other, okay? So just because I say that I have a flat fee of a certain dollar amount doesn't mean that that's the right dollar amount to have because it depends on where you live, okay? It depends on, you know, people's finances and stuff like that. Um, embroidery is a luxury and, you know, it's not something that a lot of people can afford. All right. So you just have to, you know, be mindful of that. Um, also, you know, think about like how you want to run your business. Some people run it one way. You could probably want to run it another way. Just, you have to, you know, you just try different things and see what works for you. At the end of the day, what to me is really, really important is that you love what you do, 
that, um, you know, you're having fun with it and you're actually profiting from it. Okay. Or, you know, and some people don't even want to profit from it. Some people are just fine with breaking even or whatever. But the thing is, at the end of the day, that you're happy with it. Okay. Um, the last thing I want is for somebody to feel like they got taken advantage of or missed an opportunity that, you know, or, you know, got stuck in some way, you know, because um, if you watch a lot of my lives, I like to talk a lot about different ways of handling an embroidery business and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways. Like you, you can, you see a lot of people on YouTube and, and a lot of them do embroidery. They all have different methods, different ways of, of handling things. There is no right or wrong. There really isn't. Um, you know, it's just kind of like similar, like when some people come out and say, oh, you got to get this embroidery machine because it's the best. There is no right or wrong. You know, I mean, you got to get the machine that you are comfortable with, the machine that you like working with, that you understand and stuff like that, because that's that's what's going to make make it easy for you. OK, so anyway, guys, I am going to go down the chat because I know it has been an hour and I got to tell you, I am pretty exhausted. I think you guys kind of know I am kind of exhausted because I have been in Florida for two weeks and um yeah, me and my sister have been going through quite a challenge. Um, you know, for those of you who don't know, my dad is ill. Um, he has leukemia. He has been living with leukemia for seven years. And um, for the last month, he had been hospitalized. And we finally got him out of the hospital. And he's in physical therapy right now. And we're hoping to have him home soon. And um, it's hard. It's been really, really hard. Um, we've been up in the morning early, going to the hospital, coming back late in the evening from the hospital, um, barely eating and stuff like that, um, you know, just uh, exhausted. So, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, it's just part of life, right? Things happen and you just got to deal with it. I'm still starting to get a little dry. I don't have any water with me. So, but, oh, well, but um, I'm going to go down the chat. And say hi to you guys and see if there's any comments. Hey, Miriam, how are you? Yet, yeah, ah, uh, yes. And for those of you guys that don't know, um, in Facebook, I, in my Facebook page, I posted my son is also here and he is studying to be a physical therapist. And one of the nice things was that Cornito was able to see um, his abuelo at um, the physical therapy, and he was able to help him with some of his physical therapy exercises, like walking and speech therapy as well. So yes, Miriam, I did. I posted some pictures of Cornito with um, abuelo, and um, they came out really nice. It was really nice. Uh, pictures. And um, I think my dad was really happy to have his grandson there to help him with his therapy. I think that was like so cool and stuff. Hey, Iris, how you doing? Hey, Robin, how are you, Marsha? I see Guinea, Jackie. Hey, Jay Lo Love, how you doing? Hey, Crafty Puerto Rican. How are you? Hey, Karen. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Miss Banks, how are you? Um, have, yes, dad is, he's getting stronger. He's not eating as much as, um, um, Trisha, he's not eating as much as we would like him to eat, but I know really what's going on. What's going on is that they have the hospital food, right? So my dad doesn't like the hospital food. My dad actually likes to eat my mom's food. Okay. Um, you know, we're Puerto Rican and my mom loves to cook her Puerto Rican food, right? So, um, but she has been cooking and taking the food to the hospital. But sometimes my, my dad kind of gets in the mood and he's like, I don't want to eat. So he hasn't really been eating like he should be eating. But I got a very strong feeling that once he gets home in his home environment, he's going to be like, yes. And um, I think he's going to eat. I think he's going to be really positive. He's going to, you know, and he's going to do really, really well. So. Yeah, I am hoping that he gets a lot better, Trisha. Um, really do. Um, the power of prayer. Yes, I know. Oh, God, we have been praying um, for that old man. <laughs> 
you know, he's very quiet and humble, but um, we love him so much and we can't wait to see him back home. Hey, Linda, how you doing? Thank you. Hey, Nee Evelyn, thank you. Hey, Marlene, uh, thanks so much. I'm so glad, you know, I really appreciate all the support, guys, that you guys have been giving um, to me and my sister during this time, you know, I really do. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Hey, Annette, thank you. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Deborah. Yeah, he's doing a little better. <laughs> um, everything is the tonight at five. I have my TV, iPad, and desktop going. Go ahead, Marsha. <laughs> hey, Danielle, how you doing? Um, are you getting the jitters? The jitters for what? I, Iris. Well, maybe. Okay. Well, yeah. For those of you guys who don't know, me, me and Nancy did get about like two hours to get away, and they have a Racoma um, headquarters here for the embroidery machines, and we got to go there and look at their uh, sewing machines. And I have to tell you, um, I think Nancy may be getting a coma. She's still thinking about it. She's going back and forth between the 15 and 20 needle now. Um, before she was like, oh, 15, 15. Now she's thinking 15, 20. She's not sure. Um, but I think she's going to gear to um, getting towards one of those. But I think that's probably going to be in a little bit because I think they're having a sale now for the um, Memorial Day like the 0% financing or something like that. So um, I think she wants to take advantage of that, which I think would be cool. So um, yeah, so she she may end up getting one. So we'll see. Um, I know I see a glare on one of the pictures on there. So I'm trying to get that like away so that you guys don't see that. Because that's kind of like, oh, it's kind of like, there you go. Okay, that's a little better. All right, so I should have moved that a long time ago, but... Mm. All right, so, um, hey, Judy, how you doing? Um, hello, Jeanette, so happy here. Dad's doing better. Wondering if you were still down there and glad you have company driving home. Yes, I do. I am still in Miami, Judy. Um, me and Carlito, the plan is tomorrow morning we're going to wake up. Um, I'm going to head over to the hospital. Um, that way me and I could take my mom and then um, – from there, I'll I'll be able to say goodbye to my dad and Cardi will say bye as well to Abuelo. And then um, we're going to hit the road and we're going to start driving from Miami to Virginia. I will stop at Savannah um, so we can stay at a hotel overnight and then continue the drive. So I should be home by Sunday night. Um, you know, it's a lot. And um, I plan on... Right now, next Saturday is to drive back down Virginia to Miami because my dad is supposed to be released to come back on the 28th or 29th, something like that, to come back home. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to have to make another trip down um, just to make sure everything's okay. And then if everything is fine, um, you know, then go back up. And then hopefully I can stay home in Virginia for a little bit. So it's been a little hectic. And I will tell you, I mean, this is not easy. Um, exhausted, really exhausted. It's like the driving from Virginia to, to Miami and then the nonstop driving because the hospital is not even close to my mom's house because she lives in Homestead. Nancy lives in Miami and the hospital's in Miami, but it's not even close to Nancy. So, <laughs> so it's a lot of driving from the south to the north, to the south, to the north, and that, and it's going back and forth. And um, Nancy's um, son is still in school. So it's a lot. Everybody's always in the car and we're going here and we're going there. We got to pick up this one, take that one. And it's crazy. It really is crazy. It's like, wow. And our tempers have really rolled. We've we've lost it a couple of times. Like I lost it this morning and I was just like screaming, get in the car, just get in the car. You know, <laughs> we're going to be late. 
So, um, yeah, because when you have a big family, for everybody to, like, move together, it gets kind of slow. So it's uh, it's trying times. It really is. But at the end of the day, I hope, you know, everything's going to turn out okay for all of us. So we'll see. And so, um, let's see. Hey, Deborah, how you doing about, yep. Uh, yep, Deborah came out and said, I agree about with you about doing good work coming from you. Today, doing my first t-shirt t quilt, I'm so looking at a lot of YouTubes to make sure I'm doing it right. It's important. The quality of your work is so important. That's really what's going to, seriously, make or break you. It really, really does. It really does. If you, if you do a half-ass, and I didn't mean to say it like that, but if you don't do good work, customers, they may they may accept it because they pay for it and they're like, oh, okay, well, whatever, this is how it is. But they won't come back. But if you do exceptional work and you provide that good customer service, those customers are going to want to just deal with you because they already know up front. They're like, okay, I like her. She's detailed. She makes sure that you have you are clear on what you're getting. And when you get your product, it's actually, ex if it's, you know, I mean, I had one person that said, I knew what I was getting, but it was beyond amazing. You know what I'm saying? You know, so, you know, I mean, that's what you want. You want them to, to know what they're going to get up front, but then when they get it, they're actually so happy with it because the quality is so, so, so important. And so, hey, um, Robin, hey, Delene, how you doing? I see Eve and stuff. Let me get up a little bit. I'm sitting on the bed, guys, and it's like, oh, I'm exhausted. Just exhausted. I really am. I'm so exhausted. Okay. I think I've lost weight, too, because we haven't been, like, eating that much because it's, like, all over the place. Hey, Sharon, how you doing? Hey, pretty eyes. Hey, Annette. Oh, Jeanette, you're frozen. I guess I was frozen for quite some time. I'm hearing fine, but the video's frozen. But we hear her voice going. Oh, I hope you guys can see me. Can you guys? I'm a little late. So glad your dad's on the men. Okay, it looks like people kept saying that I wasn't frozen anymore. I'm going to get on my knees here. Down here because I am tired. I'm tired. Okay. It looks like you guys can still see me. I think I'm okay. And stuff. So, hey, Nana, how are you? Miss Max, how are you doing, hon? Hey, Sylvia. Oh, Iris from Puerto Rico. Sylvia is from Puerto Rico, too. Yeah, Ma Monogram. There you go. I always get that wrong. I sometimes say um, monogram, but I think monogram is... Um, the exam for females. <laughs> I always get the stuff wrong and stuff. Hey, Miss Lady D, how are you? Hey, Emma. Great. Okay, so I see that the video may have frozen a little bit, but it looks like it went back because I see you guys were saying hi to Nancy when she did her little cameo. She did a little cameo and stuff. And I see she treated herself to some ice cream and stuff. So I'm hoping that there's some ice cream for me out there. I know I bought some for me. I got a Hawken Doss. And so I went to Publix. They have Publix here in Florida and stuff. Um, loved, would love to hear how you get business for wedding napkins. Oh, hey, um, Darlene, um, Deb Designs. Um, I usually advertise my business on Google. And um, what the way I got this order, okay, usually I have people that reach out to me through Etsy because I do sell dinner napkins on Etsy. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll say, hey, you know, because I do advertise, I do custom orders too. So sometimes they'll come out and they'll say, hey, I want to order some uh, dinner napkins for a wedding and this is what I want embroidered and that's how I do it. Sometimes I'll get orders through Etsy for dinner nap for, for weddings for dinner napkins. This order that I have coming up is a local order, and it's from a lady that I usually do embroidery for her. 
um, you know, for uh, men's dress shirts. She um, and she usually comes to me to do embroidery for her. And she has, I think it's her um, niece or something that's getting married. And um, she wants to gift her the um, wedding napkins for her wedding. So yeah, so that's how I got that order and stuff. So yeah, and I get a lot of them. I do get a lot of um, orders for Thanksgiving dinners, um, anniversary dinners, uh, weddings is a big thing, um, even um, graduation. Uh, but this year I had to turn down a lot of orders for the simple fact that I had to come down to uh, Miami. So, you know, cause family's gotta come first. So I had to put the um, embroidery business on hold, but I have customers that um, like my work so much that when I told them that I was down here, they were like, oh my God, I'm so sorry to hear that. And they were like, please let me know when you're going back up because I would like for you to fill this order for me. Cause you know, I even told them, I said, you know, I think there's other important business. They were like, nope, we, we want you. So I'm kind of like, oh, okay. So um, yeah, so as soon as I get back to Virginia, um, I have two customers that I have to reach out to. Um, and I wanna try to get their orders filled before I head back here and stuff. So that's why I say guys, reputation is everything. Um, when you really, really worked, when people get to know the quality of your, of your work, they, they know who they want, you know, they, they know who, who they want because they know what they're paying for. You know, they know that they're going to get good, good quality embroidery. So the, the, you know, the service that you provide is so important and stuff. Um, yes, Debbie, having Cardito with his abuelo was priceless. It was yeah, it was really, really nice. Hey, Anna. Oh, thanks, Jackie. Appreciate it. Um, oh, okay. Um, Anna asked me, Jeanette, do you use magnetic bobbins on your single needle embroidery machine? Yes, I do. I But I do have the pre-wanded bobbins that have the plastic size on them, but you can use the magnetic bobbins on your single needle embroidery machine, okay? Um, there is a piece that comes with the machine um, that kind of lifts up because the magnetic bobbins are sideless, which means that the plastic case is does not come with the bobbin. So you have to get lifted up a little bit. So I do do that. Um, let's see, but you can use it, Anna, you can use it. Um, Yes, Cyrus, I will. I only drive during the day. I will not. I don't drive at night. I don't like driving at night because sometimes there's a lot of drunk drivers on the road and stuff. Usually what um, I always do is I'll leave early in the morning and I will drive until I get, you know, I usually get to Savannah around like 5, 530, something like that. And then I'll just stay at a hotel, relax, have dinner. That way I'm well rested so I can get up the next morning and then I can continue the trip. So I don't, that's how I usually do it. I know it takes longer, but to me it's safer, you know? Um, are embroidered dinner napkins a good idea for a gift? What kind of napkins do you use? I, I don't know if people give them as gifts. I guess they, you know, I know a lot of people. Um, oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> Debbie. Okay, I'm going to put your question up. Okay, yes, they are. <laughs> I have given dinner napkins as a gift. Now, if you have a friend who just bought a house or is going to plan a dinner party that you're invited to or something like that, like I'll give you an example. I had a girlfriend who was going to have a Christmas dinner with her immediate family and she was trying to really decorate the dinner table. What I did was I embroidered some Christmas dinner napkins. Um, the kind of napkins that you should use, my size is I like to use the 18 by 18. And I also like to make sure that I have a mixed blend uh, dinner napkin. I usually, if you look at any of the videos that I have done on the channel um, showing how I embroider the dinner napkins, I always have a link showing where I get my dinner napkins from. Um, you don't want dinner napkins that are too thin. OK, you and you don't want them to be su super thick either. OK, um, you know, so it is a really nice uh, gift. You, I mean, and and, you know, you can give them to um, 
a couple that's getting married, you know, so that way they can set their dinner, dinner napkin up and stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's so many things you can do and stuff with dinner. They're, they're really neat gifts. They really are. People appreciate them too. I even have a video of when I gave my mom her Christmas dinner napkins. She loved them and stuff. They're really, really cool. Um, hey, pretty eyes. I would love to meet you one one day when the time is better because I also live in Homestead. Oh, you do? Oh, God, pretty eyes. Yes, definitely. Oh, my goodness. You know what? We're going to have to do that because that's what my parents, yeah. Oh, my God. You are, you're probably right, um, right by me, too. Hold on. I have someone that is trying to call me. And I'm going to have to tell her that I will have to call her back. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry. Okay. So. Um, I get a lot of friends that reach out to me and stuff to see how things are going and everything from Virginia because they know that I've been traveling back and forth and everything like that. So pretty eyes, yes, definitely. That would be like so mega cool. Just let's wait till all this stuff finishes and I have my dad home and I'll probably reach out to you so that way we can meet up. That would be like so, so really cool. I know I have... Um, met Norma. Norma lives in Miami as well. So that would be, that would be fun. I would love that too. And so, um, Jeanette, how did you do on the knitting machine? Well, Iris, let me tell you something. I don't like it. I really don't. My sister loves that machine and she can sit there. Literally she can sit there and she can crank that little, that, that, that knitting machine for hours and make a whole bunch of hats. Me personally, not my thing. Embroidery, definitely my thing. Oh my God. You put me in front of an embroidery machine and I'm in heaven. You put me in front of a knitting machine and I'm like, I don't know about this. I'm not feeling it. So, um, and I don't think it's as easy. I think, and it could be that because Nancy has been doing it for so long that she knows how to work that machine inside out. Me, on the other hand, I'm just really new to it. So it's like, I keep dropping my stitches, you know, when I'm, when I'm, the, the machine's going round and it looks simple, but it's just, it's just not my thing. It's just not, it's like embroidery is my thing. Knitting is her thing. So it's like, I'm like, I don't think so. You know, um, Hello, everyone. Make sure you put a thumbs up for Jeanette. Oh, thank you, Eve. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, please get some needed rest over time. Oh, thank you, Marlene. I will get rest. I'm telling you, I, I promise you guys, like next Friday, will be. I will be filming from my space and, and I'll be more energetic, probably with some wine, happy as can be, you know. Not that I'm not happy, I'm not here, I'm, you know, I'm with my family and stuff, but home is home. And I have to admit, I miss Fred and I miss Mello a lot. I really do, you know, I really do. I have not seen Mello in two weeks. I have FaceTimed with him. And now it's like, I kind of laugh because every time I FaceTime, Mellow kind of like looks away. So I'm like wondering, oh, that dog's mad at me because I kind of like left him, you know? <laughs> so I got to go back to my dog. I really miss him. So I am really looking forward to going back home and just being with, with uh, Fred and my dog and stuff because I really miss them a lot. Um, let's see. Let's see what else we got up here. Okay. All right. Um what is the name of the design you use for dinner napkins? I was searching, but I couldn't find it on the website you mentioned. Well, Anna, one of the things that you do is look for, if you go on Etsy, type in embroidery frame designs, and you will see a whole 
bunch of different embroidery frame designs for you to pick from. Okay. I mean, and I mean, there are like so many different types. They have different reefs, they have flowers, um, they have different squares. And then all it is, is just taking one of those designs and then you put the initial in the middle. That's what you do. And, um, and those, and let me tell you, those embroidery designs are not that expensive. They truly are not. I mean, you can get some for as, as little as $2, but some can get a little pricier. Okay. Like they can be about maybe five or $6. It depends on how, how fancy the, um, you know, the frame that you pick is, okay? Now, for dinner napkins, though, a lot of times people ask me about the size, okay? I do not go for the five by sevens. I try to shy away from those because remember, it's dinner napkins. So you don't want to get an embroidery design that's so big that's going to take up a big portion of the dinner napkin. Usually what I do is I use the four by four size, Unless it's it's a it's a design that's very detailed, maybe you'll want to go a little bit bigger, okay? And so so that in those, so just um, play around with it so that you can see how it would look. I always embroider it on the corner of the dinner napkin, also. But they make beautiful gifts; people love them. And something else that I did not know about dinner napkins is. When you have, when you, when you embroider dinner napkins and you personalize it, people sometimes, well, not sometimes that what I heard they always do is that they, um, they keep them in their family from generation to generation and they hand those dinner napkins down. So it becomes, um, like a family, uh, heirloom item. Okay. Or heirloom, you know, uh, a family keepsake item, you know, something that, that stays in the family. Um, and I didn't know that. Um, and I learned that from a lady in my neighborhood that ordered a whole bunch of dinner napkins from me, she ordered several sets. And she said she wanted to give it to her sons um, because she wanted them to have a set, each, each of them to have a set of 12 so that they can hand them down to the generation. And I was just like, really? I was like, wow. I, I mean, I had no idea. So sometimes it's, it's kind of funny too, because when you're embroidering something for someone, um, to you, it's just another job, you know, or just another project that you're working on or just something else that you're embroidering. Sometimes you really don't know the significance or how special that item that you create is going to be for that customer and the person that they're going to give it to. So just something to think about, you know, because that is one of the things that I kind of learned. Like um, one lady wrote to me because I embroidered a um, kitchen towel for her with the Puerto Rican flag on it and stuff. And she wanted a little saying on it. And um, I didn't, I, I just looked at it as it's just another order, right? So um, it came out beautiful. The, the the kitchen towel came out beautiful. And then she wrote, she, she wrote me a card. And in the card, she thanked me for the kitchen towel that I embroidered. And she explained to me that her grandmother had passed away. And her grandmother used to, um, you know, be the queen of the kitchen, right? And she would cook all these great, Puerto Rican dishes. And one of the things that she wanted was to have the kitchen towel hanging by the altar by her coffin at the, the mass that they had, you know, the ceremony, the funeral and stuff. And she said, and she, you know, she, she even, um, you know, sent me a picture of how they laid it out and it was beautiful. And, um, but I, you know, it's, it's funny because what went through my mind was um, you never know how special something can be to somebody when you're creating it for them. So just something, you know, to think about, you know, because I, I never knew when I was embroidering that towel that it was for her grandma that had passed, you know, 
and stuff. And she, you know, and, and I remember she had asked me, she said, can you um, send a priority mail? And I was like, sure, I can do that. Not, not a problem, you know, and stuff. And, you know, and, and she, she wanted the design tweaked a little bit and with a little saying, and, and I did all that and she was happy and she was just really amazed. And, um, and she sent me a card with a little picture which I thought was like, that was really, really nice of her, but it meant a lot to me because, you know, I, I, it made me feel good that I was able to, to do something for her, um, to, you know, I mean, it was sad that her grandma died, you know, but it, you know, that I was able to do something for her to, to, to make, you know, that it was special, you know, and stuff. So anyway, I don't know if I explained that right, but y'all know what I mean. But it, it, to me, I thought it was touching. So anyway, so <laughs> just wanted to share, you know, that's something else to think about, you know. Um, let me see. So Anna, I know you said the name of the design that I use for the dinner napkins. I have so many dinner napkins. Um, usually if you watched a video, okay, where I embroidered dinner napkins, I will put the link of where I got that particular side design to in the video description. If I didn't, then put a comment on that video and I'll go and I'll put that link for you. It's not, not a problem. I have no problem sharing. I really don't. Um, hey, Debbie, how you doing? Um, yeah, they they do. They, they um, dinner napkins are great. They, they're, they're great gifts. They truly, truly are anniversaries, um, Christmas, Thanksgiving, dinner napkins, really big on Thanksgiving because people like to dress up the, the Thanksgiving table for, you know, so that's like really, really good, you know, good gift and stuff. Um, yeah, Marsha, couples do keep them. They, I think they do for the weddings. When I when I embroider uh, for the weddings, I think the 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 guest keeps the dinner napkins. I guess I, I I'm sure they do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hey Terry, I know at my wedding we use paper napkins because we afraid we cheat. You know we use paper. We didn't use any cloth napkins. And so um, let me see. Annette said, just a little FYI, I've been practicing embroidering on a squirrel felt and was told by the place where I bought my machine that they contain plastic and are a good or probably not good for the machine to go to Joann's. Oh, well, you know, another thing, Annette, if you don't want to use the felts, um, what you can do is just go to, go, go buy, um, just plain, uh, just buy a yard of fabric, white fabric or black fabric, you know, get black or white fabric and use that to, to, uh, to, to test, you know, just use that to test everything. But people do embroider on felt all the time. You know, they do do that. Um, you know, they have like little felt, uh, in the hoop projects that they use felts for and stuff. So, I mean, you know, it probably I'm thinking it might leave a lot, maybe a lot of lint, but don't forget to clean your machines also. You know, a lot of people forget to clean their machines. So you got to make sure you do that on a weekly basis and stuff like that. Um, oh, you, oh, by the, oh, oh, you mean by the, and that's saying by the felt, by the boat. That's probably cheaper. And you know what? If you go to Joann's, they probably have the coupon. And also in Joann's, if you are military or military spouse, you get 15% discount. And if you're a teacher, you get 15% discount. So just something to think about, you know, get them, save those pennies. Yes. And stuff. And the tender touch, if you buy tender touch by the bulk, that's usually cheaper than if you get them in the small containers. For those of you guys that use tender touch for the backings, think about that. Think about getting the bulk also, because you probably save some money on that as well. Okay. And stuff. So, guys, I am going to call it the night. I know it's a little early that I'm calling it the night, because I usually talk for about a good two hours. And so, so, um, 
yeah, but I'm going to call it night because I am tired. I got to go to bed um, and I got to get up early and um, see my dad before we start heading back to Virginia. So again, I just want to say thank you so much for, um, you know, thinking about me and my family and wishing us all well. Um, we're all hanging in there and stuff. Our lives will get back to normal soon. And um, I'm going to start pumping out more videos on using embroidery machines, um, projects, and all that kind of stuff. I just got to get through this hump that we got going on right now. And once we are done with that, life will be back to normal. And I'll be back in my sewing room. And I will be pulling this stuff out to share more um, ideas with you guys. So you guys have a great weekend. Love you guys all. And uh, please stay safe. And, um, you know, have your, have fun sewing and have fun embroidering. And I'm jealous because you guys are all in your embroidery uh, sewing rooms and I'm not. But I'll be there Sunday. All right. So I will talk to you guys later. You have a good night. And I hope you enjoyed today's topic. And please give me a thumbs up. And please share my channel with anyone else that you think might be interested. And pretty eyes. I'm serious. Next time. I come down here, me and you got to get together, hang out. All right, so I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Have a good night.